Calcium, along with alkalinity and magnesium, are three major chemical parameters that are integral to stony coral growth. You will find that these three are linked, as rises and falls of one affect the other, and sometimes in an inverse relationship. This particular video is going to focus mainly on calcium. So what is calcium and why should you bother to test for it? Calcium is one of the major ions in salt water. It's actually the fifth most common ion in salt water behind chloride, sodium, sulfate, and magnesium. In most healthy reefs, the calcium level hovers between 400 to 450 parts per million. Calcium is important because corals that build skeletons can deplete the levels of calcium over time. If you want to have healthy stony coral growth, maintaining correct levels of bioavailable calcium is necessary. The only way to know if you need to supplement calcium is to test for it regularly, because different aquariums will have different calcium needs. Luckily, testing is pretty easy to do. I'll demonstrate with a Sailorfert test kit. There's many brands out there, and I chose Sailorfert mainly because it's probably the most popular brand, and it's one that I have the most familiarity with. The kit is a basic titration. If you remember from high school chemistry, it's a test of buffering capacity. The first two chemicals, for lack of a better word, stain the sample pink. By slowly adding the third chemical reagent, the sample will turn blue. The amount of that third reagent needed to change the color from pink to blue will determine the amount of calcium in the water. Let's start by getting 2 ml of tank water. I pushed out the little bit of air in the syringe and then put it into the sample container. Now let's add the first reagent, which is this purple powder. By using the supplied red spoon, we want to take a level spoonful and then add that to the sample. The way to get a level spoonful is to scrape it against the container as you take the spoon out. This particular kit says to not stir the powder in, so we'll just dump it in there for now. Moving on, the second chemical reagent is a liquid with this dropper top. We want to put eight drops of this into our sample container. Then we give it a stir. The way that I like to stir the sample is to flick the tube. This makes a whirlpool-like effect. Typically, people use one hand to hold the sample and the other to do the flicking, but I do it with one hand because I'll need my other hand for the next step. In this last step, we use our 1 ml syringe to get 1 ml of the reagent, which is also a liquid. The key here is to draw back the plunger until it lines up with the 1.0 mark. A mistake people often make is to keep pulling back until the water in the syringe lines up with that 1.0 mark. That's going to give you a very different reading. So here, usually when the plunger lines up with the 1.0 mark, the fluid lines up with 8.5 or close to it. Finally, we can start our titration. The key here is to go slowly, drop by drop, until we see a color change. You want to avoid sending a stream of reagent into the sample, because a quick burst like that, it's too concentrated and will overcome the buffering capacity of the sample instantly. That's not what we want. We want to see the exact amount of reagent number three it takes. And if you go slowly, you can see almost an instantaneous change from one drop to the next. Here you can see I try to give the sample container a flick or two between drops to mix it all in. And there we have our color change. Now to determine what the calcium level is, take a look at the syringe and see that it's now at the 0.2 ml mark. So we've put in 0.8 ml into the sample before that color change. Referring to the instructions, we can see that a reading of 0.2 means that there is 400 parts per million of calcium in our tank. It's a tad low, 
but nothing to really freak out about. Recall that natural salt water is between 400 to 450 parts per million. On quick glance, it would seem that simply adding more calcium could easily boost it up into the 450 range, but unfortunately it's a little bit more complicated than that. Addition of a calcium supplement in this manner often comes with a corresponding fall in alkalinity levels. This problematic seesaw effect between calcium and alkalinity stems from how the two ions interact with one another. The two ions combine to form calcium carbonate and they can fall out, fall out of solution, which uh, could end up lowering both levels. In the next reef chemistry video, I'll talk a little bit more about alkalinity and its relationship to calcium. Anyhow, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more chemistry related videos in the future. Happy reefing guys!